Good evening, welcome to Athens City Council. Tonight is Monday, April 5th, 2010. This evening, uh, City Council is going to be having a public hearing on the Community Development Block Grant, and then at 7.30 we will reconvene in a regular session of Council. Mayor Weil. Okay, this is the first of two public hearings we'll be having for the CDBG Community Development Block Grant. This is for the Small Cities Program. It's pretty much a formulaic program that we've been getting year in and year out. We just, just apply. It usually runs about $93,000, 90 to 93. Uh, majority of that, of course, goes to uh, some kind of infrastructure improvement. Um, this is uh, the public hearings that actually to get input for these um, the improvements. In the past, we've done, um, last time we did was Harold Avenue, the widening of Harold Avenue. It uh, went to about half the cost of Harold Avenue widening and getting that telephone pole out of the middle of the road. Um, previous to that was Granville Mary, I believe, and previous to that, I think part of it went to, hmm, I think it actually went to the ADA ramp on um, Arts West and the stairwell on Fort to Fairview. Um, previous administration actually used it for uh, uh, traffic light signalization on Court Street area. We have certain reinvestment areas that cover the city, usually with high uh, percentage of low and moderate income. Um, and again, we'll be taking input. Uh, we haven't, we don't have the next public hearing scheduled. The grant deadline is, let me see where it is here. The grant deadline is June 25th of this year. So we have at least a month and a half, two months to go. Um, Normally, we're thinking about is actually doing some improvements on Mill Street, the sewer in particular. Uh, last year, we were trying for a neighborhood revitalization grant, CBG as well. Uh, we did not get that, but as part of the local match, we had discussed putting in this particular formula money as part of the match. Um, we are not totally committed to it, but I, the feeling was since we had said we were going to do that, pony up with the change, we'd probably do that again. We'd probably go uh, forward with that. <coughs> This form of the money would not cover all the improvements that need to be done on Mill Street. It would cover a little bit less than half, I think. So we still have a long way to go if that's the case. And that's pretty much what it is. And I'll take any questions or anything. Any? Yes. Um, if we do things on Mill Street, I would encourage some traffic calming matters in hand because that is completely dangerous for the huge amount of pedestrians that are found in that area. And I, I know that some sidewalk improvements have been done. I would encourage maybe a couple raised crosswalks at maybe Stewart and Mill. But it's just, it, right now it's just a straightaway and people use it as a straightaway and it's an accident waiting to happen. Mm. If we're going to rip up the streets, we might as well do some traffic calming and make it a nicer neighborhood all around. Okay, when you say traffic, you're talking about the, on Mill Street, lower down by Elliott, is that what you're saying? or um, Stewart, Stewart and Mill, <laughs> okay. particularly, because it's a T and it's just, and there's a lot of traffic right there and um, mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, pedestrians who are walking to school and, okay. and the sidewalks are quite narrow there and it's a difficult area because the sidewalk kind of peters out and then it's just an area that needs some pedestrian. We need to look at it from a pedestrian angle because it is a high pedestrian area. And if we're going to rip up sidewalks and streets and stuff, I would encourage that. Okay. Essentially, I, I suspect the lion's share of the money will go to the infrastructure underneath the streets. But if we're tearing up streets, it's probably one of the things to talk about. Yep. Um, I suspect I also, if I remember, there was a, a plan put forward, uh, pre-bike plan, of course, trying to get some kind of bike um, conduit up to Mill Street. Mill Street is very hard. To, essentially, if you're coming off the bike path to get uptown, that's one of the avenues. Unfortunately, it's very, as you say, congested. And again, that's just right now in, in, in the offing just because we, if we committed to it in that last grant round, even though we didn't get the money, we kind of feel like we should follow through on that. But I, I don't think they're going to hold us to it if we find something else that is of need. Two questions. When this money be available Next year, 2011, or, or um, I believe it's for 2000. Well, it says for the fiscal year of 2010. So I imagine it gets uh, watered sometime in July, I suspect, or late July, I think. And I think you have 18 months to spend it, if my memory is correct. So it will it will glom over to 2011. And actually, we have so much on our plate, it'll probably end up that time. And then the second thing was is 
couple years ago, there was some discussion about putting either a stoplight at, at Stewart and Mill or or a three-way stop sign there so that traffic on Mill Street needs to stop at some point. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the traffic engineer at that time thought that that was not possible because of the, I don't traffic know Traffic study, probably. Tra some kind of traffic study. But yeah. um, I'd, I'd go with Member Fall and, and, and ask that at least we have um, Mr. Stone look at Okay. traffic studies for that area. I'll perk that to, um, to Andy and see what he says. I think the traffic lights usually require like 500 cars an hour or something yeah, outrageous you know, they like could, that. They'd come up with it, I'll bet. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, um, it, it is a... Mill Street is dangerous and that intersection is, is difficult. Mm. As a citizen did write in to us several weeks ago, and uh, I think the email came into Clerk of Council Debbie Walker, and she shared that with Andy Stone and myself, and it was about an accident that happened on Mill Street, and I think it was at Stewart Intersection, and so he did mention that he, we were looking towards improvements to that area, and he'd okay, think good. about it. But as you say, I think there was an earlier study and said maybe that the traffic levels didn't warrant um, uh, any kind of stop sign or signage right now. I'm willing to bet if we do a traffic study in the next two weeks, there'll be a lot more traffic with the roundabout <laughs> being constructed. It might be well timed. <laughs> well, and move in and move out also. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, after this move out, it'll slow down quite a bit, I think. There used to be a light there. There used to be really back in the '60s. There was a, there was a light there, and I always wondered why it was taken out. It, it must have been a traffic study. There used to be a bridge there, though. Well, that's true. <laughs> there was a main street yeah. going out of town. Yeah. I've been around long enough to remember the bridge. Do you? The re do you? Yeah. <laughs> I'm old. I remember the bridge too. Okay, <laughs> we're both old here. I wasn't aware there was ever light there. And you lived down there. I'm that old. Okay, enough of this reminiscence up there, guys. Um, Chris. I think that our, um, we have gone beyond just traffic as in cars, and traffic studies are not just the movement of cars down, the facilitation of movements car, cars I understand. down. I understand. I mean, completely. I think that we need to make a priority of pedestrian safety, because that is a huge pedestrian area, and it's... It's a gateway into the university, and I get concerned when people start saying, well, there won't be a stop sign because, I mean, there's a lot more information and studies and research and really innovative, great ideas about traffic calming, which make neighborhoods nicer for people who live there, too. So, you know, I think that we need to broaden our idea beyond just traffic studies. Uh, okay, I, I would have to agree with that. Again, going with the pedestrian bike plan that we have there. There's the, the one of the terms I've new to me, but I heard in the process from what's his name, Norman Cox, is the complete street, mm -hmm. which includes, of course, not only just this roadway, but also bikeways, right. sidewalks. But sidewalks, I'd also have uh, medians in between, so you have some kind of barrier between the cars and you. That make it safer and more pleasant. Yes. Yes. And I, th I think the complete streets program is a really great program. For, and I, I would encourage Andy and other people when they're looking at after they dig up streets that this is something that we can can go forward with with you know okay. the idea of making them more complete and not just car oriented. You will have your chance to do this what the 17th of April in a street tour, won't you? Yes. Oh, you will be at your beck and call. Do you want and, me to mention it? Yeah. I think oh so. yes. What? I can mention it. I'll remind people too that the 17th of April is the street tour. Okay. And the public's invited to attend. Street tour is going to happen first at 8 o'clock in the morning, and then we're going to follow with a tour of the water plants. And if anybody from the public is interested in joining us, we're just asking that you call the Clerk of Council, Debbie Walker, to let us know your name and so we can have a, a registered list of people to expect. And that phone number is 592-3342. I would point out that we're off topic of the public hearing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. It is a public hearing. And I, anybody who, who came in, could you fill out, Wendy, if you get a chance, fill out the... It's up there. Uh, oh, okay. Sign-in sheet just to say that you're public. Okay. Anything else? Any other input? No? Okay. Well, Paul, can, well this, this money cannot be used for any kind of match on the roundabout or any... 
of those kind of things? Here? It can be. Well, we, well, I say we're trying for the na uh, neighborhood uh, revitalization program, using that as a match. We can use it for some matches. Um, it's kind of limited because of the timing, but we can do that if need be. I'm trying to remember. I think there was another occasion that was used for a match. I can't remember what it was, though. But it has been used, used for other matches. Some allow it, some, depending on the other granting agency you're trying for. Uh, you're kind of limited to the location, so too. Although it covers most of the city, we're talking about various um, what we call investment areas. One is Court Street area, which of course is what you're seeing um, according to the information census, where you have a, we were like 80 to 86 percent low and moderate income there. Investment area two is the west side, which is um, again we're talking about 81, 69, and 82, depending on the census blocks. And then the east side, mostly. Uh, it says tracks, four different tracks there. They're kind of low. One's 52. I'd have to look at the actual numbering on it. Um, investment area number three. Looks like it's almost, it's around Mill Street, basically, when they say east side, I believe. So we can use it in those areas for various projects, and we probably can dovetail it with other grants. Um, it, it always comes down to timing and what we can put in at the time. But uh, it's a possibility. They, you know, again, the, the roundabout's pretty much all boxed down in terms of dollars right now. Yeah. Um, and I, I, again, I, I'd have to, I know Charlene's actually going to a meeting, I think next week, about this. They, they update the rules all the time, and they have mandatory meetings, so I, I send her up to Reynoldsburg, and she learns all the ins and outs. Good. Okay. Anything else? <coughs> no. I guess we could say we're done then. Thanks. Seeing no other comments, the Community Development Block Grant Public Hearing is at close. Welcome back to Athens City Council. Now we will be going into our regular session. It's on or about 7.30 p.m. We do have a quorum with all members of City Council present. Next item on the agenda is disposition of minutes uh, from the regular session of City Council held March 15, 2010. Do I have a motion? A motion that we accept the minutes. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> we have accepted the minutes. Under communications, um, let's see. Two things that I would like to mention. Uh, on April 8th, Congressman Charlie Wilson will be holding a Community Leaders Forum on Thursday, April 8th from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. at the Community Center Conference Room. And then at 11 o'clock, uh, he will be attending the roundabout groundbreaking, and I hope many members of council can do that. And later that evening at 6.30 to 8.30 at the Athens Community Center, we will be having a... Uh, uh, one of our town hall meetings, this one to focus on such things as noise, signage, trash, building code, police, fire, state, uh, staffing, and safety issues. So anyone interested in uh, offering solutions to that, please let us know. Again, it's at 6.30 p.m. at the community center. Are there other communications anyone would like to? Yes, member Paul. Um, I'd like to remind people that on April 12th, which is next Monday, that there's the public hearing to consider the Planning Commission's recommendation to extend the current B2D district on Court Street to Carpenter Street and to include West State Street between North Congress and East State Street. Okay. That's at 7 p.m. Yes. Member Kuhn. I would just like to invite folks who are interested in the noise ordinance to uh, come to the Safety Committee meeting next a week from today, next Monday. And I have a feeling the crowd will be a little older than this one that will be attending that one. So, any other? Yes. Uh, Member Gosney. Yes, Mr. President. Um, I'd like to just let the public know that on March 23rd, uh, Governor Strickland announced a $362,000 grant to the City of Athens through uh, stimulus funding for energy efficiency and conservation. This is for the wastewater treatment plant uh, to replace inefficient lighting, motors, and uh, heating and cooling systems, as well as some other equipment that will make, uh, reduce the energy consumption at the city's wastewater treatment plant. Very good. Yes, member nicely. Mr. President, I want to invite the public to attend a 
uh, transportation an annual street tour meeting that will be Saturday, April 17th. It starts at 8 o'clock in the morning, and we'll review the streets first that are slated for repair, and then following that, we'll have a tour of the water treatment plants, the water plants, and anybody that's interested in attending should call the clerk of council, 5923342, just to give us your name so we know who to expect. Would they get to see Hebe? <laughs> it sounds like anything from the administration. Um, let me start. Uh, you covered the town hall meeting and you covered the um, roundabout as well as Congressman Wilson. I want to reiterate that we do have our spring cleanup coming at us April 26th to the 30th. That's the end of the month. Uh, also, that um, there's been some concern about burning in town. We are in a dry period. We've had a couple calls about people starting little fires in town. It is considered not proper to do, um, considering how dry it is out there. And uh, then I have nothing else except maybe. I had, I had a question about spring. Several people asked me whether um, brush and and such is included in that. As far as I know, if it's in a bag, it goes out. Into but it's garbage. It's not yes. brush. The pickup. It's okay. not a brush pickup. Again, it, the way it's stated, if it's outside the bag, it's basically by the cubic yard, which is $25 for the first cubic yard, $3 each additional cubic yard. So I have to assume that that is all the case. So you still need your stickers. Thank you. Probably cheaper for the stickers to use stickers. Yeah. Any other communications? Reports and communications from other elected officials? Number one? No. I'd like to turn it over to oh, Kathy and... And then it's Rich okay, no report. Okay. <laughs> I don't have any new items for council. Okay, and uh, I guess Rich. Uh, I brought with me the Athens Arts, Parks, and Recreation brochure to share with council and the viewing community. Uh, you can find that brochure on the website. Um, we run programs from preschool, uh, before and after school day camp programs for young kids, um, community center programs from martial arts, uh, to now we're moving into soccer season. We just registered 291 kids, put together a schedule today, um, along with a bunch of adult classes, also working out at the community center. We have various memberships to take advantage of, along with all of our parks are open and restrooms are up and running for shelter rentals to start. Um, so I guess that was one of the main questions, to make sure everybody's aware of this. Uh, where they can find it, and if there's any businesses or whatnot who'd like copies of this to share with their customers, we we have plenty. I've seen them all over town. We, we try to disperse them well. Yeah. Any questions or comments for the director? Then I on had to, to the mayor, board, I'm sorry. The mayor. I had somebody stop me today about <coughs> the taps at the community garden, the water taps. Mm -hmm. When will they be turned on? I'll check on that tomorrow. Okay. I, I assume that was part of it. Okay. Um, I, I guess I expected rain Sunday and it didn't occur. No, it didn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> on to ordinances for third reading. Ordinance 2410 is an ordinance authorizing the service safety director to purchase a police cruiser. Member Coon. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Pardon me. Section 1 of this ordinance authorizes the service safety director to advertise, accept bids, and enter into contracts for the purchase of a police cruiser and ancillary equipment. Section 2 amends the 2010 appropriation ordinance, 15009, by appropriating from the unappropriated balance the sum of $33,000 to Capital Improvements Fund 580 and increasing the total appropriations by $33,000. Section 3 authorizes the Service Safety Director to expend up to $33,000 from Capital Improvements Fund 580 for said vehicle. Uh, as many of you know, the police department did not receive any cruisers in 2009 and they have a couple that really need to be retired. One has a slipping transmission. We need a motion to adopt. Mr. President, I move to adopt <laughs> uh, Ordinance 2410. Second. second. <laughs> motion and a second for all the reasons stated. Uh, further discussion? All, yes, Member Gosney. Um, just in general, um, I I'd like to see the police department looking at alternatives to cruising around, such as uh, foot patrols and bike patrols, as they've done in past years um, in the city. 
and that way we can save some money and uh, reduce pollution from our city fleet. Further discussion? It's a little off topic, but it's relating to um, purchase of vehicles and how, how we need to buy new vehicles every year or two. And if we could reduce that, that would be a benefit. Mayor Weil. Um, if I remember the um, the submission of this cruiser was the uh, the discussion of actually retiring two and just picking up one, so there will be a reduction. As we're trying to get around town, we have a little green whatever it is go kart out there. Um, and as for the bicycles, I don't know what the status of the bike patrol is at this point, but I do know the limitation of trying to get around town on foot is very difficult uh, due to the fact that the uh, the staffing we have. It would be very hard for them to trot from one side of town to the other. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Passes 6 1. Voted no. Ordinance 2610, a long one, an ordinance authorizing the filing of a proposal with the Ohio Department of Transportation for grants through the USDOT Federal Transit Administration, FTA, as authorized under federal transit laws as codified 49 USC section 5311, financial assistance for other than urbanized areas and funds available from the Ohio Public Transportation Grant Program and Ohio Elderly and Disabled Transit Fare Assistance Program and executing a contract with the Ohio Department of Transportation upon grant application approval for the period from January 1, 2011 through December 31, 2011. Member Nisley. Mr. President, I move for adoption of 2610. Second. And this is an ordinance that authorizes the uh, city to enter into a grant agreement to apply for a grant for the Department of Transportation. And what this does then is uh, uh, provides funds for the operating system for the grant uh, for our transit. It's approximately $370,000 a year. The exact amount of that is determined at the time that the proposal is submitted to the Department of Transportation and the budget's developed. Motion and a second to adopt Ordinance 2610. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ordinance has been adopted. Ordinance 2810 is an ordinance granting a revocable license to the owner of 483A and B and 483 and a half Richland Avenue to allow parking on the city right of way. Member Paul. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I move that we adopt um, 02810. Second. Um, this is actually a transfer um, of a revocable license because of new ownership and the person would like it in their own name. Um, and the parking, it's pretty straightforward. All the paperwork has been adopted and passed by the city administration. Is there further discussion? Member Sands. As Member Fall um, stated, this is a revocable license. Our revocable license is for parking on the right of way run for a, a period of 10 years. In this instance, the ownership changed, so they had to get a new revocable license. So the, the clock will start ticking now, and 10 years from now, we'll okay. revisit it okay. again. Thank you. All those in favor of adoption of the ordinance? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ordinance has been adopted. Ordinance 2910 is an ordinance amending Ordinance 10109, establishing fees as required by the Afton City Code, introduced by all members who are speaking to this. I hope Member Bain. Member Sands. Member Sands. I really don't have it. Well, let me get the original ordinance. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I move that um, Ordinance 02910 be adopted. Second. Second. Um, basically, this ordinance is dealing with um, um, penalties and um, costs for uh, various um, fees required by the Athens City Code. And we are changing within this ordinance one penalty fee. Uh, Section 230313, the penalty for a minor misdemeanor is, is going to $100 per occurrence. Each day a violation continues constitutes a separate offense. Which item is that? It's for the 
This this was for um, we had talked in the code. It says a um, penalty will be assessed, and the fee was never put into the penalty. So this is cleaning up the code. This is for the signs, right? Yes. Okay, to be clear, we're not changing the definition of a minor misdemeanor. No, it's just putting in, it was never put in, the penalty number was never put in. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. That. And that was brought up a long time ago. We call these cleanup ordinances. Cleanup, yes. Housekeeping ordinances. Yeah. Okay. Is there further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ordinance has been adopted. Now we move on to ordinances for second reading. Uh, Ordinance 3410 is an ordinance amending Ordinance 6208, establishing a fee schedule for solid waste and recycling, Title V of the Athens City Code. Mm -hmm. Second reading. Ordinance 3510 is an ordinance granting renewal of a revocable license to Baker and LaBelle, owner, 35 Hawking Street, to allow parking on the city right of way. Ordinance 3610 is an ordinance granting renewal of a revocable license to Ohio University Employees Credit Union, Inc. for use of a portion of the city right away along Riverside Drive to accommodate an ATM driveway. Ordinance 3710 is an ordinance granting renewal of a revocable license to John Wharton, owner, 50 West State Street, to allow parking on the city right away. Yeah. Second reading, so like that. Now we're moving on to ordinances for first reading. Ordinance 3810 is an ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute a housing revolving loan fund administration agreement with the state of Ohio Department of Development. Member Sands. Mr. President, I would like to move that we consider ordinance 3810 under suspension of the rules. Second. Um, it was noted in our discussion last week that this is um, a renewal of an agreement that we had with the state of Ohio, state of Ohio uh, Department of Development, and it expired December 31st of last year. So, in order to stay as current as possible, we need to um, institute this new contract as soon as possible. Further discussion on suspension only. All those in favor of suspending council rules on Ordinance 3810? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The rules have been suspended. <coughs> Mr. President, I move adoption of Ordinance 3810. Second. Again, um, this is a, a program um, to administer our housing revolving loan fund. Uh, this would be funds that are paid back for by uh, community members who have taken advantage of the CHIP program, which is the community um, housing Improve. improvement program, community housing improvement program, um, which can be utilized for a myriad of um, repairs and upgrades to a home. And we are simply renewing a contract with the uh, Department of Development to administer any funds that are paid back. Further discussion? All those in favor of adoption? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ordinance has been adopted. Ordinance 3910 is an ordinance amending the 2010 Appropriation Ordinance. Again, Member Sands. Again, Mr. President, I'd like to consider Ordinance 3910 under suspension of the rules. Second. Um, there are th Three, um, well, actually, this is put into two categories. Um, um, funds that are going to be appropriated. One of these is for a program that will may require some funds as early as April 12th. And so um, we need to have the money ready in case it is needed by April 12th or soon after. Further discussion on suspension only? All those in favor of suspending the rules? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The rules are suspended. Mr. President, I move adoption of Ordinance 3910. Um, this ordinance, as I said, has two um, appropriations, actually, from the unappropriated balance in the general fund. $11,000 is moved to the At Athens Enhancement Fund. Uh, for two reasons, to assist low and moderate families with house painting and repair replacements and repair and replacement of heating appliances associated with the installation of risers by Columbia Gas. This is a program that Columbia Gas is undertaking 
At this moment, all we know is that in the zip code of 45701, they're going to replace up to 1,900 um, risers into the into the uh, gas meters. And as part of that installation, the contractors will also be checking um, appliances within each of these houses to make sure that they are um, adequate. And these funds might be used to help low income families who could not afford to replace a furnace or a, a stove of some kind. Um, also, this $11,000 includes a $1,000 support grant for uh, Student Senate Beautification Day. And then there's another $1,000 um, movement to the general fund other administration to the, for the Tree Commission. Um, Athens is hosting the Southeast Ohio Tree City USA, USA Awards Program. And uh, this $1,000 is to help defray expenses for that program. There further discussion, Member Bang. Um, it's important to point out that the enhancement money comes from payments on the Athens Station Loan Fund, and it's not general fund money. It's I'm sorry. Well, it's okay. I mean, I think we we need, just need to point out that it's not coming yes. out of what could be. Well, it could be used for that, but right now it's available for extra things to enhance Athens. Is there further discussion? Yeah. Yes, Mayor Weil. Okay, in the past, this is the paint program established by, I think, uh, I think Nancy Bain and Dale Tamke many years ago. Um, but not with our own money. Not with our own money, their own money. Um, part of the thing was to do housing improvements. Um, it hasn't, we didn't do anything last year. The year before, I think we spent about almost 10,000 of it. That would be 2008, I believe. Um, the, we're just trying, we're not sure whether we'll get another um, people applying for the paint program, but we are aware of the fact that uh, if somebody goes in and they can't fix a, an item, a water heater, a stove, or a furnace, or something like that, the gas company will not turn it on. And we, that's our concern at that point, is that somebody would might be stuck financially not being able to have the gas turned on, or at least that appliance turned on. That's why we're doing this in eventuality of that. Um, and that's a concern. The possibility of it happening, I don't know. It's a, it's a, you know we don't know that until they start, and, you know, putting the rises in, I guess. So I just want to mention it. It's a, it's a program that's been going and going for many years uh, with some activity and some not activity, depending on year to year. Okay. But we're changing the definition of, yes. of the program. Yes. Yeah. Expanding a little bit. Expanding the definition. And it's, again, it's, it's targeted low and moderate income. So there is a uh, income finding that goes along with this. Further discussion? All those in favor of the ordinance? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ordinance has been adopted. Uh, let's see, what one are we to? 40. 40. Uh, ordinance 4010 is an ordinance amending Athens City Code Title 13, General Offenses, Chapter 1307, Miscellaneous Offenses, to add Section 130709, Persons on Roof, and Declaring an Emergency. Member Kuhn. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, section 1A of this ordinance states that no person shall occupy a roof or porch roof of any structure when police officers are siding or have sided the occupants for a violation of a city noise, disorderly conduct, or nuisance party ordinance, or a disturbance is taking place and police have ordered persons to leave a roof or porch roof. B states that uh, that would be a violation, um, that that violation of Section A is usable for determining a nuisance party violation. Section C states whoever violates this ordinance is guilty of a minor misdemeanor if the offender persists in violating this section after reasonable warning or request to desist, the offense is a, it gets booted up to a minor misdemeanor of the fourth degree. So persons uh, on roofs don't really have anything to be concerned about unless there's, unless officers are citing the occupants of the structure that they're in. Member Kuhn, I noticed that there is a emergency clause attached to this, and I know the intent was to um, have this possibly ready for Palmer Fest or Fest season. Uh, 
did you wish to suspend tonight or were you going to do, suspend it next reading? I, I do not wish to suspend tonight or next reading. We're going to go through all three readings. However, we won't have to um, have the 30 days. Okay, so the emergency clause. Yes, hence you. the reason for the emergency clause. Right? Very good. Other comments? Member Bain. I'd like to remind everyone out there because I did have a person from one of the newspapers say that we were going to prevent people from going on their roofs, and that is not true. It is simply the case that it will be under the situations that we have outlined. Actually, I pressed her a bit and got her to, re to acknowledge that we aren't going to make you get off your roof, although it might be better for the roof if you weren't on it, <laughs> but um, we're not going to make you get off it unless the police officers are, are trying to stop something that's either noise, disorderly conduct, or nuisance party oriented. Very important to note that difference is because I certainly would not vote to have you take your beautiful bodies off the roof from Suntanning. No, we all enjoy that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't especially care, but I just... <laughs> um, yeah, Member Sands. Although I, I have talked to more than one um, landlord who says that uh, no, no being on the roof is in the lease. And um, they may, there may point. be some retribution from the landlord, but not from the city, um, unless it's a nuisance party. Especially if the lawn chairs puncture the rubber or something, yeah. then we'll be in serious yeah. trouble. But Any that's not comments? our problem. <laughs> okay. Ordinance 4110 is an ordinance amending Athens City Code Title 11, Business Regulations, and Act in Chapter 1110, Contractor Registration. <laughs> Member Fall. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, at this point, I would like to um, amend the, the um, ordinance. Um, we talked about this last Monday. Do we have a second? Second. Doing. Okay. Um, we talked about this last Monday that we would start reading it and amend it. Um, there are kind of four amendments. Um, uh, John Paskey has looked at the contractor's bond. Um, we would like to remove the requirement for the contractor's bond altogether. So that means all the numbering of the whole ordinance has now changed. Um, the bond, um, it's been found by many other cities that the bond has just not been useful. So it doesn't make sense to require people to go to the expense of, of um, attaining one for adding a couple definitions to what is now 1110.01. Um, we would like to exempt maintenance personnel. And those are the type of people who work for property managers. And we would like to include in 1110.08, traits required property managers. And this kind of gets to what was discussed last week with the gentlemen that were here um, about who really should be responsible for obtaining the permits. Maintenance personnel who work for property managers are already having their um, taxes paid, which is the major thrust of this contract registration requirement. And then the fourth requirement, I have these written down. Um, the fourth requirement is that there was some concern about um, the charge. Um, and the uh, affordability of this process. We um, would request that it be brought down to $75 for the permit, that coupled with the, um, the um, elimination of the bond permit feel that this is fairly reasonable in, the, in this greater scheme of things. We have a motion and a second to amend ordinance uh, 4110 as stated. Is there further discussion on the amendment only? All those in favor of the amendment? Bill. I'm sorry, Mayor Weil. Okay, I'm so missing you all together tonight, aren't I? Um, if I understand correctly, you're going to eliminate the maintenance personnel from the right. 11101. Is that it? 11101 maintenance personnel employed for property owners would be exempt. So okay. the idea is that the property owners, the property management company, is already paying their taxes and such. Okay. And and we, are, we are sure that they are paying taxes. I mean, if I just don't want to register, I could say, say I'm with him. And him being somebody who well, I mean, may or may not have right. property management company should be should be registered. Oh, okay. But not right. the individual employees. Right. Okay. So if I'm working for a landlord and the landlord has to have a property management corporation in place. Well this is how it I mean this is more tax oriented than Permit oriented. Uh, the definition of what a property manager versus a landlord. 
I mean, okay, a landlord who doesn't hire property um, maintenance personnel who don't have them on the books would be having to go to somebody who would theoretically have to already be uh, have a permit because they're subcontracting, right? Only if we can track it. Okay, the other one is emitting a bond, okay. And what was the other two? Um, the last fee? one would be reducing the fee to $75. Okay. I had a conversation with the, uh, the, the members of the public who were here last time, and I think I asked how much they charge per hour. It was $40 per hour. So at this point, all they have to do is work an hour and a half or so, two hours? Right. Okay. Well, I mean, but there were other council members who were concerned about other people who work for less money. And and Mr. Pascal. Twenty dollars an hour? Sure. Yeah. Four hours. There are a lot of people who work for ten dollars an hour yes. or less. So, so one day's work, two days work. Yes. Even so. Yeah. I I'm more comfortable with the seventy five, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And adding, there was one more you asked, and we're adding the housing maintenance workers right. into trades required. Okay, yeah, the trades required. Okay, yeah, the trades required. Property manager. Yeah, those are the four. Which one is it? Eight. Here. Okay. Looking ten. Oh, the numbers will all be changed. Though. Okay, no problem. Okay. This we one out of the email for people. Motion and second to amend forty-one ten as stated. Is there further discussion on the amendment? All those in favor of the amendment. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ordinance 4110 has been amended and read for the first time. Ordinance 4210 is an ordinance amending Athens City Code Title 31 building regulations. Again, Member Paul. Um, thank you, Mr. President. This is a pretty straightforward ordinance. Um, basically, it's taking 28 pages of code and reducing it down to a couple um, because we are adopting the residential code of Ohio as opposed to putting out our own code or having the BOCA codes, which is no longer in effect. This was discussed at committee. Discussed. Further discussion? <laughs> now to the ordinance or resolution that a lot of people I think are here to hear about. Resolution 0510 is a resolution supporting the installation of lights on Fenway Park at the West State Street Park. Member thank, Butler. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I did notice, before we proceed, I did notice that there is a, a typo, if this is the appropriate moment. Yes, it is. Okay. If we um, can possibly change um, encouraged in the uh, fourth whereas to required. And I believe that was from an earlier change that somehow did not make into the final resolution. So without objection from the law director, which whereas the, the fourth whereas. Mm -hmm. Encouraged Just, here, it's changed to require. Is that okay? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. We are recognizing that as a typo and we'll reflect it as such in the minutes. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, should I move to adopt before reading or yes. after reading? Okay, thank you, Mr. President. I would like to move to adopt um, this uh, one reading resolution, R0510. Second. Motion and a second. Thank you. Um, and now, is it appropriate at this moment to read this? Thank you, sure sir. Is. Okay. Well, prior to reading, I will just acknowledge that last week um, there was uh, a lot of concerns and contention regarding the uh, placement of lights at the West State Street Ballpark. So um, I was approached by uh, Mr. Todd Zorn to consider uh, supporting a uh, resolution. And uh, Member Gosney was willing to co-sponsor this under some uh, whereases. So it's um, with delight that I acknowledge, uh, through some hard work and uh, perseverance here, that uh, a one reading resolution here supporting the installation of lights on Fenway Field at the West State Street Park. With the first whereas being, Athens City Council is committed to providing recreational opportunities in our community. Whereas the Athens Youth Baseball Organization was awarded a community development block grant through Athens County to light Fenway Field at the West State Street Park. And whereas the city of Athens does recognize the donated materials and volunteer efforts of Sandlot Baseball League's efforts to enhance the Athens West State Street Park, whereas the Sandlot Baseball League is required to follow the signed memorandum of agreement and work cooperatively 
with the City of Athens Arts, Parks, and Recreation Strategic Plan for Future Planning and Development, be it ordained by the Council of City of Athens, Ohio. Section 1, Athens City Council does hereby support the installation of the lights on Fenway Field at the West A Street Park. In Section 2, this resolution shall be in full force and effect at the earliest moment permitted by law upon its passage and approval by the mayor. Motion and a second. Further discussion? Any comments or discussion? Member Bain. Um, <clears throat> I, would, I'm, I am under the impression that there is a agreement between Mr. McCarthy and Paula Mosley concerning this process. So actually, when we talk about support of the installation of lights on Fenway Field, we're talking about accept, um, accepting that, aren't we? Isn't that part of it? Since you were a part of the deal that brokered it, I, you know, I don't know what was there. It seems to me, as I've been quoted in the paper as saying, there was a lot of talk, but not much discussion of what seemed to be the issues that were at stake. Uh, my understanding is, and Mr. McCarthy is here and he can say I'm wrong, but the rev that this process will be revenue neutral for the city. Secondly, um, they will be either using um, prevailing wage or volunteer work. They're going to follow the CDBG rules. Um, that they're going to follow the recreation plan. The question about the transformer, which I'm not at all capable of discussing, but will be the decision of professionals. It won't be decided on the floor of city council. And um, additional lights will be follow, uh, decided on the basis of a plan. And those are the things that I've heard are part of your agreement. Is that true, Mr. McCarthy? Those are basically it? Yeah, we had an extensive meeting, uh, George McCarthy for Athens Sandlot. And it's not an agreement between myself and Ms. Mosley. It's an agreement between Athens Sandlot and the, and the right. city and the service safety. Well, we haven't actor. seen it in writing. It would be nice to attach to this, actually. I understand. It was up to Ms. Mosley. And uh, my understanding in speaking with her that she was thought the meeting that we had that was uh, productful that um, Mr. Butler essentially headed and Mr. Gosney attended too and listened to both sides and, and helped us reach the agreement that we did. Essentially, uh, the sticking point last time with Ms. Uh, Mosley on behalf of the City of the Service Safety Department was the cost from going from point A from the existing power source to the lights itself through our discussions and uh, and uh, group meeting that we had with a select uh, few of us, uh, Athens Sale Lots of will absorb that cost itself. Mm -hmm. So it won't cost anything for the city out of pocket for that. So that's correct. It'll be neutral mm -hmm. as far as that's concerned. Um, there was an additional requirement that the city uh, was looking at adding a control box to control the light system as far as turning it on and turning it off. Um, well, we indicated that if uh, if that was going to be the impeding cost or the impeding um, measure that would keep us from forwarding the lights or championing the lights, that we would absorb that as well. But apparently the city's come forward and indicated that they can find something more cost effective that they can pay for themselves, mm -hmm. is my understanding. Um, the original bid for 16000 did not include a transformer, actually, when it was mm -hmm. further reviewed. And it's our understanding in speaking with the people that we have volunteered who are licensed electricians that a transformer won't be needed there. So the revised cost estimate that we have is about four to $5,000, which is a cost that we're looking to, that South and Sandlot were born and not the city and not the taxpayers. Uh, so that's all, that's all true what you set forth. Um, I, I presume that the service safety director, that this is an administrative decision that she was, had brought this forth certain city council members, whoever appropriate, Mr. Butler did. So that's all, uh, that's all accurate as, as stated. Okay, that's, you know, basically it was never a question of whether we were for or against Sandlot at all. I mean, well, we it's got to be very emotional, as I said last week, and in fact it was over details like transformers right. and lighting and things like that. And, you know, so I'm glad it's reached a resolution. Um, I'm not sure this is necessary, but I mean, oh, well, no, but we can't feel better. It. And, and we just, you know, like to thank, you know, both the council members, Mr. Butler and, and Mr. Gosney, for coming forward and listening to both sides and helping us formulate that and get us beyond that sticking point, which we thought, which is why we're originally here in the, in the first place. So mm -hmm. we appreciate their efforts and, and, and uh, uh, applaud their efforts in getting us together with the city administration to get us through that sticking point, mm -hmm. which we think we've done. And we, you know, uh, the volunteer work, the other thing you mentioned was the prevailing wage. And prevailing wage. 
and volunteer work in Brent Hayes and Hayes Constructions is still 100% behind the project. We'll be taking on those costs himself with volunteer work in kind contribution. So we appreciate that. And obviously, we appreciate all the, all the support we've gotten from the public as far as sending in and contacting the administration, letting them know they, they come and uh, support this. And we couldn't think of anything more fitting but uh, have a resolution with, with your support behind us from City Council on the uh, opening day for Major League Baseball. So we're kind of happy to. We appreciate everybody's efforts in coming together on the issue. Thanks, George. Thanks. Other comments by council members? Member Paul. Um, I think that, that last week um, the city was accused of not supporting um, youth programming or not providing for youth programming. And as Rich Campanelli has um, shown, that the city is very supportive of youth, um, youth programming, including Sandlot. I'd like to, to point out that the city is, has supported Sandlot, um, provides you know, maintenance for Sandlot, provides mowing and such for Sandlot. So I think that that's something that needs to be, to be put out. Um, I personally think that lights are great. Um, this whole process has me, um, it's problematic for me because the process itself has been so messy. And I think messy processes tend to be very expensive processes in the end. Um, as the president, you know, as the chief of police did say, you know, now we have to worry about the parking a lot. We have to worry about kids being out late. Um, and I think this points to the fact that this particular park is being used intensively. And we need to have a inclusive, um, public-oriented, public participation planning process for this park in particular done within you know the next however long next six months next nine months that includes Sandlot but includes other people who use this park extensively um, and make it uh, sunshine and make it a public participation so everybody can look at the long-term implications of this because it may be that you know four years from now we want to put in more lights and we may have wanted to put the transformer in because we may need that and then it's more expensive down the line so I think that it's more the process that this went through the communication um, the fact that we do have a memorandum of an agreement that has been signed by Sandlot and that wasn't signed very long ago and it seems like the communication process um, needs to be straightened out, and that we need to do some planning for this for this park. And I don't, I don't, th I think that park will be better if we do some long-range planning. Thank you, Member Fall. Other comments by council? Yes, Member Gosney. I mean, really, the reason that this came before us the way it did is, um, as Member Fall pointed out, is the process. And the, the fact is that um, the process was not followed on this and but the situation we're in is is that we city has to make a decision whether or not they're going to support this in the meeting i had uh, word from sandlot that going forward they would work with the rec department and the rec department i understand is putting together um, a master plan for city parks um, sometime in the, within the next year or our strategic year plan actually is up uh, next so. year we've completed probably 90 five to nine nine percent of it so we need to look at that plan and we'd like to adopt what sandlot's plans are we really don't have a plan from them what they would like to do with the park from from the start so if we have somewhere to start and go from and then get public input i think it would be helpful across the board on how we move forward in a positive way and and that was um, that's why i support this and, and believe that this is the right thing to do um, with the full hope and understanding that moving forward, the city and Sandlot will work together cooperatively um, on this uh, city park, and that this, these types of conflicts uh, will not arise in the future, I, I hope at least. <coughs> Other comments? All those in favor of the uh, resolution? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? The uh, resolution passes 7-0. I really want to thank a lot of uh, young people for sitting through our uh, civics lesson. And, well, they came and got what they wanted. So congratulations.
have a couple of items more on our agenda. I'll get through them real quick if you can bear with us. Announcements and other business. I do have uh, two appointments to the Athens City County Board of Health uh, that have been forwarded on to us from Mayor Weil. One is uh, Marjorie Nelson, MD, and uh, that is for the term beginning January 1, 2010 and completing December 31, 2014. These are four-year terms, obviously. And then Robert D. Uh, Woodworth, also a physician DO, to finish out the term of uh, Margaret Fry, Marnie Fry, uh, and that is for the term that began April 1, 2010 to December 31, 2011. That's just completing an unexpired term. Is there further discussion? Member Sands. I'm sorry, I'm just going to offer a... Please do. I move that we accept these appointments to the Board of Health. Is there further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations to these folks for joining the Board. Any other announcements and other business for next time? Uh, <coughs> finance and personnel, we have some issues that we need Development to Development and plan. Anyone else? Safety. And yes. safety. Okay. And maybe others. Maybe transportation. And maybe transportation. Okay. The next and last item on our agenda is an opportunity for citizens to speak on any legislative items or city services that we did not cover on tonight's agenda. Is there anyone wishing to speak before council on any other issue? Seeing none and having addressed all items on our agenda, we are adjourned. Thank you for coming.